Boston Coin Update February to March 2024 Weirdest and Strangest Newsletter Ever This is the weirdest and strangest newsletter I have written in some 9 years, and not just because I am typing this sitting on a transnational train, journeying some 1,000 kilometers through Vietnam. I have been adjusting to the schedule of losing 10 to 15 hours in transit, adapting to the time zone and internet, and finding myself in a strange city, filled with adventure, culture, mystery, tradition and wonder. Apparently, whilst my devices were in flight mode, the crypto markets have been going off like fireworks at Chinese New Year. Okay, so we had seen some indicators that markets were moving, with the entry of Wall Street into crypto back in January, but this was a known quantity. Whilst the entry of Wall Street was forecast as an inevitability, we did not have a firm January 10th kickoff and the SEC basically crumbled in November last year. Those who have been in crypto for more than 5 years will know about the happening that occurs with Bitcoin every 4 years, and how the having of new Bitcoin supply usually results in the price more than doubling. We have seen this several times in the past 15 years. What seems to be weird and strange this time around is the level of maturity in the market, and in the market players. Crypto has long been a club for young boys, and meme coins that did not involve dogs often revolved around techno jargon, or juvenile jokes about body parts or bodily functions. In 2024, not so much. Leading up to the previous halving in 2020, we had celebrities, finfluencers and charismatic cult leaders, alongside bobbleheads on TikTok and YouTube, promising people the world for a small fee. Fortunately, the swamp seems to have been drained of these parasites. Kim Kardashian was fined more than double the amount she received for promoting a scam coin. Schemes, scams, that once flourished like weeds, such as BitConnect, Crypto MLM and Ponzi's and Pyramids seem to have died down to a mere handful. We have witnessed the arrest of Sam Bankman Fried for his embezzling from FTX, and Interpol chasing down Du Quan for his Terra, Luna collapse. Alex Mashinsky has been forced to give up funds taken from Celsius and investors have received almost half their money back. Celebrity YouTube influencer BitBoy Ben Armstrong had a very public meltdown, and the guy who made a living from showing off his expensive toys was reduced to begging for money to pay his lawyers. Call it karma or call it schadenfreude, we are happy to see the dishonest players taken down. The surprising thing about it, is the vacuum does not seem to have been filled. Any good historian knows that when a king is killed, the killer becomes king. Now that the corrupt kings and queens of crypto influencing have been almost wiped out, who will take their place? It feels weird. I'm guessing that there may be historical precedents for the uneasy feeling of restrained relaxation that one has when the old villain is gone, and you are unsure when or if the next will appear. Were citizens uneasy after the death of Billy the Kid or Bonnie and Clyde? If most of the big name celebrity thieves are gone, what happens next? I'm hoping that once bitten now wiser investors are reasonably gun-shy of celebrities, particularly those who have almost zero experience with crypto or investing. Perhaps the power vacuum can in fact be filled by the people, who do not really need kings or queens, as we can all be capitalists, communally. Perhaps instead of blindly following a celebrity into a scam, we can all learn to do our own research. Meanwhile, look out for the AI scams that do not just copy celebrities, but can copy friends, family and workmates. Be alert but not alarmed. Just as banks and crypto exchanges insist on two-factor authentication, two fa, feel free to use another authentication method if you seem to receive a message from a friend or loved one who needs you to send money. If you receive a text message, make a phone call. Double check and be smart, because even video calls can be faked, just not very well. Is this the world's best scam? Scene, a large multinational company with HQ in Europe and a trading desk in Hong Kong. An email from the boss in Europe to the representative in Hong Kong, urgent, please pay this supplier $25 million, top secret. The Hong Kong representative thinks there is a chance that the boss may have had their email hacked, so they email back and say, hey, do you mind jumping on a quick video call? The boss agrees. Five people are on the video call, including the boss, the Hong Kong rep, the company treasurer and two other higher-ups. The boss on the Zoom call says to pay the supplier and keep it secret. The Hong Kong representative is now satisfied, and makes the $25 million transfer. To the scammers. Not only was the email hacked, but the scammers had been secretly recording the company's video calls. 
They used hours of video footage and deepfake video technology to make a pretend boss say what they wanted. Dang. You lose $25 million here and $25 million there and all of a sudden it adds up to serious money. How to protect yourself from video call scams. Eye movements. How the individual's eyes move is usually a dead giveaway. If their eyes don't blink and shift naturally as one would during a video call, you need to be careful. Glasses reflections. If the person you're calling is wearing glasses, look at how the light interacts with their lenses, the amount of glare present or absence of plausible reflections. That's because deepfake technology is not yet able to fully recreate the natural physics of light. Awkward audio. Although deepfake technology can recreate voices with an impressive level of accuracy, pay attention to how the audio syncs up with the individual's lip movements. If it feels like a poorly dubbed Netflix special, aim to verify the person's identity another way. It's not just live video calls that can be deepfaked. Scammers can also use hashtag deepfake technology to create convincing YouTube videos of celebrities, famous investors or advisors. They often promise you ridiculously good returns, if you send them a little bit of money. Watch the eyes, the lips, the glasses, the skin. Do not send someone any funds, without several forms of verification. Nobody will give you double your money with zero risk if you just send them some first. Please share this story around as it may save a friend from losing a lot of money. Your scammed friend then has to come and borrow food money from you and it gets awkward. Better to share the information, save the drama and protect the friendship. Fun with investment names. By now you may be vaguely aware that there are a bunch of Bitcoin ETFs available on the market. Each of the funds has its own name and ticker code, just like the stock market. For example, the ticker code for Stock and Commonwealth Bank of Australia is its initials, CBA. For Westpac Banking Corporation, its ticker is its initials, WBC. The ticker codes for Stock in Telstra and Tesla are shortened versions of their names, e.g. TLS and TESL. BlackRock named its Bitcoin fund in line with their iShares range, all starting with the letter I, so the BlackRock Bitcoin fund has the ticker in it. Grayscale went equally mundane, with the Grayscale Bitcoin trust being GBTC. Vonek decided to have a bit more fun with their ticker and made it hold, a long-known typo for hold and a phrase often used in crypto circles. Not to be outdone, investment manager Valkyrie used the 2020 meme money printer goes BRRR. This joke referred to the devaluation of the USD by excess Fed stimulus cash printing. The Valkyrie Bitcoin fund ticker code is BRRR, so we know exactly how they feel and who they are. Aside from having a great sense of humor, the Valkyrie team must love Bitcoin a lot. They are the first in the world to launch a double Bitcoin fund. This fund uses leverage to double your returns. Warning, leverage can double your returns on the way up, so a 10% rise in price will give you 20%. However, leverage also doubles on the way down. A 20% fall in price will give you a 40% loss. Be careful! How did we go this month? A rising tide lifts all boats, as Warren Buffett says, but some more than others. Wall Street firms have piled into Bitcoin, driving the price up over 30% during February alone, less some drops as profits are taken. Meanwhile, some coins that deliver valuable solutions to real-world problems have risen even more. In the Boston coin portfolio, Injective up 822%, Solana up 624%, Chainlink up 264%. For the dark coin portfolio, Akash Network up 916%. Render up 465%. Thor Chain up 332%. As always, stay vigilant. Even though you can make gains of 100% or more in crypto far more quickly than in the stock market, it only takes a split second to lose it all to a scam. We use antivirus software to prevent payload hackers, VPN to stymie geolocation hackers, various firewalls, and other security measures. Some of these products you can get for free or for under $1 per day, just make sure to get them from a reliable source. Check reviews on Play Store, App Store, and Trustpilot. Stay safe, make the commitment to share the information with three friends this month, and create your own crypto bubble circle of trust.